So hello everyone, I'm Tofu, and as you can probably tell by this uh, screen and the thumbnail, we'll be doing some island tours today. So, I'll see you on the first island, see you in a sec. So, here we are on the island of Sheep Isle by Artsy Sheep. And I've been told it's a vaporwave island, so very 80s, very neon colours, very synonymous with the colours pink, purple and blue, like you can see in the flag. And I'm just going to jump into the map because Sheep Isle is very close to my heart because all the villagers here, as you can see, are sheep. And it makes me very jealous, especially with Utopia and my attempt to try and get an all sheep island. But yeah, I'm just really happy to see all of the sheep villagers. And then we have Artsy Sheep there and Gina as well. So let's jump into the island, shall we? And first off, you can obviously see this pink train track. And I'm just going to go up. I do plan to go left, but I'm just interested in this little area here. Lots of, obviously, snack machines and things like that. ATM. Ooh, a nice, a nice water code. But then you've got the car on top of it. Interesting. So, is this meant to be, like, almost glass over the top of water? So you can see the glass... Oh, sorry, the water underneath. Or is it just, like, a really shallow water area where you can still walk through and park your cars and things? Either way, it's really interesting. And I, I like the blue, obviously, with the pastel pinks and things. Just really, really pleasing. For anyone that's not quite sure about what Vaporwave is, obviously it's, like I said, very neon, it's very synth kind of music, and I think in the is it early 2010s it became a little bit meme -y and people started including things like a Greco-Roman um, like statues and things, hence things like this being included, into various images and it became very kind of ironic with certain typefaces being used as well. But yeah, I'll show an image on screen as to what I associate with Vaporwave. But one thing I really want to mention is I love this little kind of walkway between. So obviously it's meant to be water. I assume this is meant to be just like a little raised area so that you don't get wet when you're uh, passing through the various areas. I'm already getting distracted just by how good this island looks and I said I was going to run to the left. But there we have the museum entrance which looks just fabulous. Right, before I get too ahead of myself I'm going to just run back and uh, run to the left like I did promise myself. So I want to make sure that I just see all of this island and that I'm not you know, missing any bits. Okay, so we'll run across this train track. And we've got some more cars just parked on the water. Very nice. Oh, we're straight away into a fun fair, like arcade area. Oh, I love this little uh, stage for musicians and bands and things. And this flooring is just really nice. Very 80s. We'll go through here. Just looks like more uh, fun fair, more amusements and recreations. Like obviously these surfboards there. Again, just lots of colourful, lots of pastel colours on the beach as well with the design codes. Oh, we have uh, what looks like a few stools and things with various bits of uh, tropical clothing. A ranchu goldfish. I think that's the ranchu one. Oh, just a little picnic area. There's Frita, my delicious bay. And then we've got what looks like just a little area to, I guess, shower yourself off after you've been on the beach. I'm just going to run up here because it looks like there's a home. I think this was Gina's home, if I remember correctly, on the map. But I really love the use of these ice pillars and all the different colours. Just fantastic use of all the different colours. Again, very very 80s, very, very vaporwave, honestly. Absolutely nailing the theme. A couple of villager homes here. I'm just going to run over this bridge. It's not even a bridge, it's the campsite. Then you've got the all the fruit trees just behind it, lots of pink flowers as well. It's very scenic and very nice. But it looked like a bridge when I was just like just through the trees here. It kinda looks like a wooden bridge, but my bad. Let's uh, run around it then, shall we? Oh, is this Gina? Was this Arcy Sheep? This is Gina. Welcome. Why oh, thank you, Gina. And all the beaches look really just cosy and nice places to relax and chill out. We'll go up these stairs here. Some very nice use of the mermaid furniture, which I don't tend to use myself because it 
it's a very specific theme that it feels like it's fitting. But here we have what looks like a little private pool area with uh, a few little bits of bars, I guess. The snack machines, you've got the little paddling pool and the jukebox. Like I said, lots of pink, blue and purple. Oh, someone's lost their book. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> uh, we'll just run off to the right and we've got another little kind of dining area with a few snacks. Cool. And I'm pretty sure I saw a load of villager homes just at the back here. So Willow's house. Uh, I'm not sure whose this is. Frita's house. Should have known that really because I've got Frita on Utopia. Pietro's house. So it's going to continue all the way, I guess, up to the stairs on the right here. Yes, I am correct. But I can also go just in front of those that little raised area. But before I do, there's just another little area with some water. I'm just going to assume it's under glass and it's just a really cool looking effect. So that you can actually park things like your cars or your bikes on there without actually getting everything wet. You'll have to correct me if I am wrong, artsy. So again, more of these ice pillars and very colourful, very bright, very vibrant. Just really good looking. Okay, we've just found a outdoor library. Very nice use of the wooden block furniture, obviously in the pastel um, customization. Very fitting for the colours of the island. Ooh, and then a very pink looking cafe. Good use of the Sanrio furniture as well. Again, I've never really used the Sanrio furniture very much. Only in very specific uh, areas of my islands, I guess. It looks like we've got more uh, villager homes here, so I'm going to assume that's Muffy's, just with it being all black. This looks like Stella's. Wee, I was correct. Cool. Okay. I'm just going to have a quick look around this top area. Here we have the lovely Eunice. Just make sure I'm not missing anything. There's Stella. Oh, so many fantastic faces. Okay, so we look. We looks like we have another um, just resting area on the beach. Obviously, we've got these starlights, the pink, purple, and blue, which are just throughout the entirety of the island. Again, I really love this code here. And the fact that obviously you've used the statues as well, very fitting. Just a quick run down this beach. I will try not to get <laughs> stopped by the blanket, but I failed in that attempt. Go over this bridge. Some more just blankets on the beach, so you can obviously have a nice rest on the beach next to the ocean. Plenty of areas to sit down. Oh, Pietro's in this uh, fancy looking restaurant area. So we've got the stool with the menu on here. Is he like the um, the garçon? Is he going to lead me to the table? Or is he a patron? Guess we'll never know. Another little raised walkway through this water area, which I absolutely love. I know I've mentioned it, but oh, it's just beautiful code. I'm actually going to run through this water area as well, just so that I can try and find this little bit on the right-hand side. Okay, cool. We're almost back at the entrance, and there's a little playground. Again, very pink, a lot of bits of purple as well, and a few bits of blue. Again, this train is just an item I don't really use very often. And that's in front of a little picnic area on the beach with a stool. I'm guessing this is artsy sheep. And smiley face to you as well. And right next to the lovely etoile. And I guess this is just a little beachside bar. Obviously with the coconut juice and then the orange juice in the pink bottles. Very nice, very nice. So I'm just going to... Oh, I'll get out of the way of the tree. I'm just going to quickly run around the island to make sure that I have actually seen everything. Because I have a tendency to miss things. And I'll jump cut to anything I may have missed. And then I guess we'll visit a few villager homes and the player home. See you in a second. Okay, so I must admit I didn't actually go near the resident services and behind that obviously you have this raised waterway like walk path and then you have the uh, Nook's Cranny and the Able Sisters. 
and obviously very fitting with all the colour schemes that have been used, much like the rest of the island. You've got this pink storage shed, which I guess is used by certainly one of the, uh, the shops, but maybe both. And yeah, I love the use of the pink and uh, blue kids fencing. I think it's called kids fencing, but I could be totally wrong with that. And then obviously there's this little path here that leads up. You've got another bridge which leads almost to the uh, top level, but you've got all these colourful ice pillars as well. And let's just explore this top level again, because I believe this is where the player home was. There you go, we've already see, obviously already seen the uh, library, but here we have the player home, which is of Artsy Cheap. They have their own little pool space with the hammock and the TV. Very nice chill area. And then just an outdoor lounge, I guess, with the Moroccan furniture, which I absolutely love this Moroccan sofa. It's one of my favourite items. Yeah, cool. Right, we're going to jump cut into one of the villagers' homes. I guess we'll choose two to see, and then we'll go into the player home. See you in a second. So here we have the home of the lovely Willow, very uh, yellow inspired, very orangey as well. I actually meant to speak to her and I turned off her light and oh, I'm getting a telling off. Uh, I, I do what I want, Willow, you'll find this out when you come to my island. But very nicely decorated room, obviously very uh, yellow inspired like I said, but very cosy, very, very Willow. Right, let's visit another home, shall we? And I definitely wanted to visit Muffy because, obviously, she's another one of these sheep villagers that I would love to have on my island of Utopia. And I kind of expected the home to be very black and purple inspired, much like Muffy is, our goth queen. Hello. Ah, oh, she's a lot more welcoming than uh, Willow was. Ah, oh, I, I would love a nap, Muffy. I'd, I'd never say no to a nap. Again, very nicely decorated home. Just, again, very very fitting for Muffy's character. Oh, we've got the little... Uh, is that Etude? I, I don't remember which um, KK album that is. But anyway, it just really nicely decorated room. It feels very lived in, very Muffy. And uh, now we'll move on to the play home. So, jump cut. Oh wow, so this is very Vaporwave, very 80s synth, that's just exactly what I associate with the term Vaporwave. Got this little gaming setup in the corner, looks very nice, very fancy, a little, I guess, lounge area within the lounge. You've got the TV, the sofa, and then the karaoke machine. Yeah, very well done, just, ah, uh, chef's kiss. Okay, so this looks like a little bit more of a private bedroom space, but very cosy, obviously, with the sofa, the bed, and all the toys and things. Obviously, incorporating lots of the pink, purple, and blue. Certainly lots of blue and pink in this room. But, yeah, very cosy, very nice. I like the use of the Sanrio posters as well. Good job. Okay, and then we have what looks like a bathroom with a jellyfish in it, but why not? But then I like the use of the screens. It feels very private back here with the bath and then I guess the toilet here. So you're not immediately spied on when you're doing your business. Again, I love the lighting. I assume that you've just changed it to be quite blue in here. And then obviously you've got the water flooring as well. Very fitting with the rest of the island. Yeah, just I really like what you've done with this place. Okay, a very purple inspired kitchen. Uh, I like the fact that you've separated the room, so this is almost the dining room area. And then you've got the actual kitchen itself with obviously all the um, appliances and utensils and things on the right hand side. But again, it looks like you've just dimmed the lighting down a bit and then obviously that blue star, I'll say lamp for word of, want of a better word, but it's clearly a clock I guess. Just giving that nice blue ambience. Yeah, just like I said, it's running theme, but I really love what you've done with this place. And up in the attic or loft space, it looks like we've got a, our own little private arcade with obviously all the uh, video game cabinets, the pinball machines, and then you've got the pool table, the foosball table, and table tennis. 
and then the little seating area in front of the karaoke machine with this guy <laughs> dancing along and then the use of the lava lamp is really good especially with the disco ball oop I didn't mean to do that <laughs> my bad but again I love this flooring it's just yeah so good okay and then the basement seems to be I guess a little um, relaxation room for want of a better word you've got obviously the sofa you've got a few games you've got the piano the little uh, board game corner just over here next to the fridge and the snack machine something I did notice is all these sheep posters on the wall and that is definitely something I would love to have when it comes to Utopia I'd love to collect all of the uh, all of the sheep at some point but definitely have all their posters displayed somewhere in my home like I said it makes me very jealous so that about concludes Sheep Isle and the Vaporwave Island if you'd like to visit the island yourself, the dream address will be in the description below, much like the next island we're about to visit. So, see you there! So welcome back, we are on the island of Mirage, which is a Doctor Who themed island, made by Fuzzelina on YouTube. And to be honest, I don't know too much about uh, Doctor Who, I know the very basics, so I have a special guest with me. Hello! It's Mumsy, as she's a little bit more kind of up to date with Doctor Who so she can tell me hopefully any of the references that I will miss and I will guarantee to miss some and uh, yeah she'll actually be able to explain what they mean. Well slight disclaimer <laughs> it has been a very long time since I've watched Doctor Who so I mostly know about the I think 9th, 10th and 11th Doctor. I'm not super up to date because I believe that was like 2006, 2007. Okay but that's a lot more knowledge than I have. True. But, as I'm on the Doctor Who island, I thought I would dress up as a Doctor. I believe it's the fourth one, which is Tom Baker. But anyway, let's jump into the island. So, first of all, we've obviously come across a uh, TARDIS, the blue phone box. All time and space. Or all of time and space. Where do you want to start? Uh, I don't know. Obviously, you can see the outfits here. So, here are some of the Doctor's outfits. So, I believe... Uh, I don't know the numbers, but is this David Tennant's? And then you've got Matt Smith's. Matt Smith's. And I'm not sure about these ones, I must admit. No, not super certain on that. Um, but I did notice this Doctor Who logo, which is really well done. It's really well done, yeah, very good. It's so nice. Um, I tend to go left, but I have just noticed this little area. Ooh. I assume these are the Weeping Angels. I would assume so, just because... They they're kind, angels. They, yeah, they kind of look kind of creepy as I well would without the head. I using them. Elvis, do you mind? Oh, he's very intimidating. <laughs> he's very pushy. <laughs> he doesn't want you to look at them. Okay. Okay, so obviously we've got this vote Saxon sign. Okay, and uh, Saxon, I believe, is the master. And the vote Saxon sign is for him. In that episode, he is uh, trying to become the prime minister, I believe. Oh, Okay. Uh, I don't know what bird means on the ground. Do you see that written I, there? Yep, this here next to a, uh, a I, skull. I don't know what that is. Okay. No. I'll just keep following the beach because obviously it's been very well decorated. Okay. And there's plenty of things to obviously go and look at yeah. in the moment. Yeah. So. Um, I know there was a fireplace episode um, where the TARDIS was connecting to some sort of like I think it was French um, mid-century sort of like um, fireplace so this this could potentially be a reference to that I'm not sure I mean it would make sense with the antique I guess chair and then you've got the uh, the painting as well so it's meant to I guess portray that and we've um, got a load of Christmas, Christmas stuff. items and then you can see the shop and the tailors in the background followed oh, by loads okay. of children and mannequins. Right, there is a mannequin episode where mannequins are being controlled and I think that's like the introduction of... Um, is it Rose? It might be Rose. It might be like one of the really early episodes where, um, yeah, there, there are these... <laughs> it actually looks terrible. I'm sure if you watch it now, it would look awful. These mannequins are attacking people. It's probably very comedic instead of scary. Oh, we see a little Dalek on that mini island I guess yeah definitely cool you know what I was given a few gifts 
There's my sonic screwdriver. Oh, let is me, that what that is? <laughs> I think so. Let me wave it out. Okay. Cool. It's been Broken, defeated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what have you got here? Uh, right, we go left, I suppose, and we have this... Uh, is this a library? Looks like a library inside a cage, and then you've got okay. a couple of um, I... okay. very, very ornate dresses. So there dresses. is a library episode, um, and there are the, the enemy is called like the Shadow or something. I don't really remember too much. I remember this little scene where he throws something into the shadow. I think it might have been some food or something, and it gets absolutely like devoured. Oh. And so they just have to avoid the shadows. It might be a reference to that. Okay. Obviously, we've seen the paintings of uh, Cybermen there as well. Which yeah, is... I I think I don't know, but um, there was a Cybermen episode where they were like ghosts, and people thought they were like the ghosts of their beloved, you know, past. Um, and unfortunately, they weren't. They were just Cybermen. <laughs> oh, okay. So it, it could be a reference to that. Um, I've gone a little bit ahead, and I've just seen this little space on the beach. And can I squeeze through here? I can just about. You've got Bad Wolf written down on... It looks like Bad Wolf. I'm yeah, it's definitely Bad Wolf. Bad Wolf um, is an episode. And I think there were several ep like references to Bad Wolf throughout the season. So it was... I don't know if it was like... Um, almost kind of like building up to the climax of the bad wolf episode oh and then we got a, a bus like, yeah the stingray bus okay <laughs> i didn't yeah i didn't i didn't notice those stingrays uh, i saw the bus and i was like what's what's with this uh, bus you know what i didn't actually see the stingrays no. so i just concentrated on the bus so there is a stingray um like dead world and then for some reason the doctor's there and he has to like uh, drive this flying bus off well before they get eaten up by the stingrays. Okay, um, and then I'm going to be wandering around a lot, so uh, forgive me, but we've yeah, come I'm not across sure about this, this very futuristic and uh, it's probably really well made, and I'm just not, I'm just not seeing it, honestly. I mean, you've got better chance than I have. Like I said, my knowledge is so and basic. I've not seen every episode. Um, and uh, then we, oh. A fiery altar. Okay. Um, there is a Pompeii episode. Okay. So that would make sense if this is this is that. Um, it's I think it was Donna. Uh, the Doctor and Donna. Um, they go to Pompeii. You're going too fast. You're going too fast. Okay. Come back. <laughs> okay. My bad. Um, they go to Pompeii and um, their like the actual explosion was set off by the Doctor. Um, because he has to fight some sort of alien invasion by like rock people and all I remember is Donna was really sad at the end because she wanted to save everyone and uh, I think the doctor managed to save like one family and that was enough for her yeah yeah um sorry you moved on to the left here yes and I think these oh, are stop. okay you go around. yeah I'll go around um yeah. these are the little alien guys from this episode of like these diet pills and you had to um it, there was some sort of campaign that the the fat just walks away and literally these were um the little aliens that were coming off the people's bodies as they were taking the pills um very early episode i believe so that's as much as i remember okay i mean it makes sense because obviously you've got the ufo there so that checks out in my books but... i think they look really good like i recognize them straight away so the the model fantastic okay immediately then we've got um some Roman centurions and Stonehenge. Yep. Uh, yep. Th th there is definitely a Roman episode. It's basically around Rory, which is like Amy Pond's um, uh, then boyfriend, I believe. And uh, he um, is a Roman for some reason. I don't know if he got turned into a Roman, um, but he literally spends like a thousand years as a Roman. Uh, it, it's a complicated episode, but um, yep, this makes sense. This this will be that. I'm pretty sure. Okay, then we've got these robot-looking things. I don't remember. You don't remember that. I don't okay. remember that. No, I'm not sure. That's fine. Um, I, I'll just keep going up the beach, I guess. Wow. Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. We've got <laughs> Daleks and a game show. Yeah, th there's a game show episode as well. I don't. Oh, I didn't know you could do that with those. I don't remember um, what the plot was about, but I do remember that there was a um, uh, an Anne Robinson, like, weakest link uh, robot 
So I'm guessing that's that. I could be wrong. It sounds crazy, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, I mean, it definitely sounds weird to me, but like I said, I don't know any of the references, so why not? <laughs> um, I'm not sure this. what this is. I don't know. A person in a cage with a telescope. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I guess we'll move on. Or is there something back here? Back here. What's this? Uh, ooh, I'm not sure. Definitely Simon's house with a load of toys. That's, and that's definitely something, and I'm not <laughs> I'm not getting it. There's so much to see on this island. Yeah, um, how do you get up here? There's clearly yeah, a build be, up on this cliff. Yeah, there must be something towards this side. Are oh, we going down? Just, Maybe you have to go... Just stairs. Go through the flowers and see if that... Okay. Because there's clearly a TARDIS... I don't know if there's a better way of getting here, but the only wedding thing I can think this is, is um, when uh, Donna turns up inside the TARDIS and she spends the, f the full like first episode in a wedding dress and I think she was getting married. Maybe it has something to do with that. That's the only wedding I can remember. Okay. Um... I'm not going to go down because obviously it looks like it connects to part of the island we've already seen. So I will just follow this staircase here. And we've got lots of flowers, obviously moss, weeds, there's a Dalek or two just down here. Ooh. Oh, oh! this looks like maybe the library on the right. Can you go back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> look. Because I do know the shadow people... Oh, there's a ladder. There is it? a ladder, so I'm going to go up here. The shadow people, um, they were attacking... There was one that was attacking people at the very least, and he was wearing a space um, suit. I think the idea is that it had eaten the person inside of the space suit and was walking around in the space suit itself. And um, there was a light that would uh, illuminate, like a skull inside the, uh, the space suit. So I think this is going to be the library. I mean... I guess that makes sense with the skeleton in the corner as I well. I didn't That's even kind of a bit, see that. Bit creepy, I didn't even see that. Also, just side note, it kind of looks like a fisheye lens with the curvature of the uh, the floor and the uh, bookcases. Just really strange effect, but... I guess it's because it's so long. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> I guess it just feels like I've never seen that curvature before. Um, before I run off to the right, I did see the secret beach, but there is this little area here that I wanted to just check out because I saw these faces and I thought it was really creepy, but I felt like it just needed its own little segment, because... Okay, I, I'm not sure who that is. I can't remember. Like I said, it just looks really creepy. It does so look really I, creepy. I, I wanted to just dedicate like a small amount of time to it, because, yeah. It... And once again, I feel, I feel like that's really obvious, but I'm just not picking it up. Okay, so we'll go to the right then, obviously, through this little path, I guess very wooded area next to where the campsite would be. We've got a few, I guess, mystical items like the Mystic Pond. Okay. I guess it's just a nice looking campsite. Maybe, I don't know. It I'm might, not, I'm not. Might have a reference to something, but unfortunately. If there is, I'm not feeling it. Okay, so we'll go this way. Uh, we've got a chessboard next to a chair and a throne. Okay. And then what looks like a castle. Okay. So this is going to be the player's home, I would assume. Well, it, I would guess it's like a London-based thing because of the um, the uniforms. The at the uniforms. Front. Um, I guess I'll leave the home till last, just to explore. But we'll go down this little path here. No. Oh, so we're we're on the moon. Um, there was a Mars episode, and it spent a lot of the time of them in a spaceship. So maybe this. Maybe. Okay. I mean, sure. I mean, why not? It's a little bit laggy. Just, I guess there's so much um, items, obviously custom designs, and then there's a lot of waterfalls which do tend to uh, just slow things down a little bit. But it's really nicely designed. Just, oh, there's a um, a warp tube there. I guess I won't go there just because it will ping me to an area that I. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, true. We, we don't know where we're going to end up. Okay. Um, there's just so much to see. And yeah. I feel so bad because I just don't know 
any of the references. I, like I said, I know the most basic. I can see those scarecrows, but I don't know what that would be. Um, shall I go and just explore that a little bit further? Yeah, we'll go have a look. Um, just further, just in case. You never know, something might uh, jog in your memory. I don't know, oh, this also kind of looks like a farm as well, so... Is there a farm? I can't remember. Okay. It might not be one I've seen, I don't know. Like I said, it's been a very long time since I've seen Doctor Who. And I really don't remember the plots because they're really complicated. I mean, there's definitely a lot of farm going on. Like equipment yeah. and obviously all the vegetables and yeah, crops and things that you can grow. I'm going to just, just go this way. So again, this is just an extension of the farmland. The farm, and yeah. Obviously, it must be a reference because there's the TARDIS yeah. like phone box there. There's another one on the beach, so let's just have a quick look there. <laughs> okay. That's an open grave. It sure looks like <laughs> it, yeah. With Dalek. Get back there. Um, what could this be? I'm not sure. Um, and there's a lighthouse, obviously, just at the top. Don't know if that helps at all. Yeah. The only grave I can remember is when um, the Doctor, um, like the angels, take Rory and um, Amy back in time. And then he sees their graves. Um as obviously time has passed and they've they've passed on. What's this? Oh, there's so many Daleks oh, uh, and skeletons, and I think I think they're being zapped. And sometimes you see the skeleton of the person. I, yeah, I mean, I, I <laughs> guess it makes zapped. sense because there's another little skeleton here. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 I did something. Run away. <laughs> Jiggles. Uh, more more space stuff. Again, this is maybe maybe this is meant to be the the Mars episode. Um, we've got oh. What's this? Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's the face of Bo. Okay, elaborate, please. Um, he's meant to be some sort of all-knowing, um, like long-lived, we'll see the end of the universe, massive face in a jar, obviously. Oh, okay. As and opposed to this face. And this face, which I kind is a stretchy of, face. Yeah, I was gonna say I kind <laughs> of know about this, but only through um, yeah, images. Uh, this is some kind of skin blanket woman called Cassandra? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, Lady Cassandra. And uh, all I know is that um, she is a a, a skin. <laughs> okay. And um, that she has these servants who just sort of like spray her with moisture and she loves moisture. Okay. There seems to be a little almost wedding esque area just because this suit and I'm not sure this just fancy looking dress but then you've got this really and these two rocks elaborate... I feel like they're meant to be something yeah and then we've got a mech right next to the wedding hmm yeah the only wedding I can think of is um is Donna's wedding okay I guess we'll go up here because I've seen a few of the uh, various villagers running around I don't know what this is, the ice thing. No, do the um, Christmas and fish models Yeah, yeah, this is something? the Christmas fish episode. <laughs> oh, well, silly me. So, um, yeah, there's, there's like these sky fish uh, and there's this sky shark. It's like almost like a, a Scrooge episode where um, the doctor, he, um, I don't remember the whole plot of it, only that... Uh, this is a good representation of it. You're in the. You're looking at the wrong I thing. Know, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay, so there's like a girl who's been like cryogenically frozen, and she only comes. Um, she's only awoken every like Christmas Eve, and she sings, which is the microphone there. Okay, makes sense. And it it can control um the skyfish. <laughs> yes. Okay, skyfish. Yes. It's actually. I think it goes through all of her her life. So is in like they see her when she's quite young, and then she slowly ages throughout time. Oh, there's some graves down there. Yeah, I think that was where the um, the weeping angels were. Maybe that's but meant to be Rory and Amy. Okay, you don't know what the ice area is. I don't. Is I'm it? sorry, I don't. That's fine. We've got some more Cybermen. This is we what do. I was looking at before you told me off for running off. <laughs> um, we've got obviously all these villagers and players. Okay, Clara is uh, one of the doctor's assistants. Okay, I've, I've got to run, apparently. Um, I'm going to press this button before I do. Ah. Okay, I don't know what happened. Uh, 
mysteries of time and space. Hello? I Idris. Idris. Um, Idris is complicated. I don't, I don't really remember. But okay. I think Idris is like the human TARDIS. Okay, that sounds very complex. I think like the TARDIS's mind or something went into a person. It's very complicated. I'm sorry. I'm not going to get into it. This is Doctor. And Alonzi, um, the 10th Doctor. Was that um, David Tennant? David Tennant, yeah. yeah. And then we've got this lady with an eye patch. Which is River Song. Which is um, Melody Pond, I believe. Same person. Okay. And then I think this is the only other person we haven't said hello. My lonely angel. Um, this is the fireplace girl, I think. You know, I mentioned about the fireplace. Yes, the um, um, like French um, Renaissance say, type 18th, thing. Nineteenth century type. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually thought she might become one of like his assistants. Um, I think the TARDIS broke and it was connecting to a fireplace, and uh, he was interacting with this. Um, well, I think it started off as a girl, and then he's trying to fix it, and then he comes back through, and it's like a, an older woman, and then it, you know, um, he keeps popping in and out throughout her life, until eventually um, he's too late and she's gone. So, mm, okay. Um, I think this little path just below us might be leading from such to the resident services. I don't know if it has any. I kind of feel like we've not seen everything. I'm not going to lie. There's so much to see. Okay. I guess I'll just do a quick run around and we'll jump cut if we happen to have missed anything. But then I want to explore this house because obviously yeah, it's Yeah, I'm assuming blue. this is the TARDIS because it's a blue house. Right next to the TARDIS and then you've got the if uh, the Doctor will move. Thank you very much. You've got the Doctor Who logo almost like a welcome mat. So... Right, we'll do a quick jump cut um, and I'll run away from this mosquito. Oh, I was waiting for it to bite you. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll jump cut if just in case we have missed anything and then we'll jump into that home there. So see you in a second. Okay, so there definitely was an area we missed and it's just beh behind the first library. So we have this kind of like, I guess, banquet set up. Okay. But then we go in here and there's a load of gas masks in what looks like a hospital. Yeah, um, there definitely was a gas mask thing. There was this, um, I think it was a little boy. And he kept following around the doctor and he was saying, are you my mummy? And it, I think he had a young woman um, beside him. And it was like um, all these people, I think it was during like a war timey episode, were suffering from some sort of illness. And all I remember is that a gas mask would essentially sprout from their faces. It's not as if it was on their face, but it came out of their faces. Oh, that's really <laughs> creepy sounding. And I'm, I'm assuming this um little area in front of it mm -hmm. is also part of the same um episode and it was like this is very timey of that you know it has the vibe of being from that same era so i suppose with all the antique furniture again it seems and the very music kind of, yeah, yeah timey and there's just this little space up here which i don't know i'm not sure we've seen it it's uh some more romans the entrance for the museum but lots of obviously stone lion dogs and then this painting area i'm not sure what this is another, yeah. another space we, man then we see the space <laughs> area that we've already explored yeah okay okay we should have a look at that house i think yep jump cut and see you there okay uh i'm guessing this is the inside of the tardis uh yeah it sure is um it looks like it anyway I don't remember him having a skeleton though. <laughs> I assume the fez is relevant. Uh, yeah, it was one of the doctor's like favorite hats. Um, I can't actually remember who it was. Um, but yeah, they they were really uh, fascinated with the fez for some reason. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just going to head into the right room. So, see you there. Okay, and it's some sort of bedroom. Um, I do know that there are bedrooms on the TARDIS. So potentially this could be one of the bedrooms. I don't remember there being like an open garden area. But once again, I don't know everything. Uh, I am assuming though that this is uh, a TARDIS room of some sort. Okay, so I didn't actually know that the TARDIS had multiple rooms. I know that it's like, I guess, infinite on the inside. But, it, you know, I didn't know to what extent that actually means. Is it just an infinite amount of rooms or... 
Yeah, I really don't know. I like the heart rug. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen it in that colour, actually. But um, I guess I'll jump into the next room. Okay, and this looks like a, a wardrobe. Um, there definitely is a extensive wardrobe on the TARDIS, so this could be that. Okay, I guess it makes sense with the fact, obviously, you know, he travels through time and space. He's going to need a lot of costumes to match the various timelines that he's in. And he has, um, well, it looks like there are time period costumes in here. So there's a few uh, longer dresses and um, yeah. It's definitely this uh, fancy looking tux. <clears throat> okay, next room. Okay, I don't know what this is. Um, yeah, this... Is this meant to be like a almost a cinema or like a an airplane? It kind of is giving me airplane vibes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, I guess you'll have to forgive us because yeah, we're this not probably really sure is a reference one. to something. But uh, I guess we'll move on to the attic space and then the basement. Sure. So, uh, yeah. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Um, this is a bit more, I guess, creepy. <laughs> I don't remember the TARDIS having a full dinosaur. No. Um, no. You've got like a little Cyberman-esque no. face on this um, screen here and then a skull in the giant test tube-like thing with a pharaoh outfit. And yeah, I feel like there is an episode with a dinosaur and I just can't remember it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I feel like this is a reference and I'm just... I can't remember. Okay, well, no worries. Like, you can't be expected to know everything when you've not seen it for so long yeah it's been a while okay in last room in the basement and uh giant library by the looks of it with a swimming pool um i don't know if we've ever seen a swimming pool like on screen but i think they have a lure to the fact there is a swimming pool in the tardis somewhere i feel like um one of the doctors came out and was just like yeah i've been in the pool and then one of the assistants were like what pool we've got a pool <laughs> so that might be that yeah i really like that um almost it feels like um you know the inner workings of the tardis is behind this uh, library-esque wall here yeah it's done really well and just it gives you the illusion that obviously things are always working things are moving along in the background yeah yeah and, then and we've got this little pram or child carriage <laughs> um yeah child carriage sure I, I, my um again I, I could be wrong but i believe as a reference to when um amy pond was expecting her baby that um the doctor brought out this crib and he wasn't saying whose crib it was and there was almost again they do this a lot where they kind of let the the sort of like watcher assume what they want potentially this could be uh, the doctor's crib or potentially he had a child i don't know i don't think they'll ever really fully you know tell you the truth on that just random note i i love the fact they've used this space mobile right above the um the carriage the crib the pram i didn't even notice that it's really cute yeah so guys i guess i'm going to end today's episode here thank you very much to the creators that have obviously allowed me to view your islands you've both done an amazing job i also want to say a massive thank you to mumsy that's okay so if you would like to check out mumsy's channel obviously you can find her on mumsy's mumsy word sorry on youtube and hopefully i did a okay enough job at trying to explain some of these um i'm hopefully i wasn't too wrong with everything but um i did my best it's certainly better than what i would have done but i want to say thank you very much guys and uh hope to see you in the next video and until the next video have a good one cheers bye